Hi, I'm Calera Stratton with Portland State University, and today I'm going to be talking about the connection between temporal lobe epilepsy and attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Ramachandran introduces us to temporal lobe epilepsy, which I will henceforth refer to as TLE, as a form of focal seizures localized to one region of the brain, in this case the limbic system. TLE is characterized by symptoms of intense emotional experience, simple partial seizures, also known as auras, complex partial seizures, also known as absence seizures, and memory loss or disruption. According to the Epilepsy Foundation, TLE is the most common form of epilepsy, making up about 60% of all epilepsy diagnoses. Its onset tends to be preceded by a head injury or febrile seizure, and usually occurs prior to puberty or near the end of adolescence. Seizures can be difficult to recognize. Simple partial seizures most often take the form of gastrointestinal upset and mood disturbances, along with auditory or olfactory hallucinations, while complex partial seizures often involve freezing in place, spacing out, and inability to speak comprehensibly or to understand words being spoken. There are two types of TLE, neocortical temporal, which makes up about 20% of cases, and medial temporal, which makes up about 80% of cases. I'm most interested in the medial temporal form, MTLE, which typically originates in the hippocampus or nearby limbic structures. So what's the connection with attention? In 2010, a small brain imaging study by Koble et al. conducted on boys with ADHD found decreased gray matter in regions of the right temporal lobe as compared to the controls. Another 2010 study by Zhang et al. found that the attention, network, the attention network is impaired in patients with MTLE. They also found differences in the default mode network disruptions between patients with MTLE and right MTLE. Other studies have found connections between catecholamine deficiencies and both ADHD and epilepsy. But the most clear-cut connection is that there are much higher rates of ADHD among people with epilepsy. According to a 2009 literature review by Kaufman, Goldberg, Stern, and Schuper, research has found that at least 20% of children with epilepsy have ADHD, dwarfing the 5-7% to rate in the general population. A 2003 study by David Dunn found that out of the 175 children with epilepsy he examined, 38% showed clinical signs of ADHD. Interestingly, in a reversal of trends in the general population, of the children with epilepsy who met the criteria for ADHD, more were girls, 44% as opposed to 32% of the boys in the study. While in the general population, boys are diagnosed with ADHD more frequently than girls at about a three to one ratio. They also found that the inattentive type of ADHD was more prevalent among both boys and girls at about 64%, while in the general population, ADHD inattentive type is found in only about 13% of boys with ADHD and is more prevalent in girls with ADHD at about 35% of diagnoses. Although Dunn anticipated finding higher rates of ADHD in children with seizures focused in the frontal lobe due to earlier research implicating the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex as important for attention, his research found no statistically significant difference in rates of ADHD between children with frontal lobe focal seizures and children with seizures focused in the temporal lobe. So why does this connection exist? There are many reasons there might be a correlation, but the ones I found most intriguing are the following two possibilities. Epilepsy causes brain disruption in brain function that causes ADHD, or ADHD and epilepsy share at least some causative factors in common, so that when one is present, the other is also likely to be present. The latter possibility in particular interests me because of studies that found that rats with a genetic predisposition toward epilepsy have brains that are deficient in catecholamine neurotransmitters in some areas, and other research that indicates that children with ADHD may have a dysregulation of catecholamine neurotransmitters. This is unsurprising due to the roles of dopamine and epinephrine in motivation and attention. Furthermore, most medications for ADHD, such as methylphenidate, act by inhibiting the reuptake of catecholamines, particularly dopamine. 
Given the clear link between ADHD and epilepsy and research implicating the medial temporal lobe in a mediating role in the attention network, further research is called for to investigate whether there are differences in the medial tempor temporal region in children with ADHD inattentive type with MTLE versus children with ADHD inattentive type without MTLE.